On behalf of the New Orleans Center for the Gulf South and my co-chair, Dr. Laura Kelly, I'm thrilled to welcome you to Tulane University for the inaugural Indigenous Symposium, Indigenous Spaces, French Expectations, Exploring Exchanges Between Native and Non-Native Peoples in Louisiana. As complement to the rich programming offered in the celebration of the tricentennial of the City of New Orleans by our colleagues, we offer you this immersive day-long experience through which we hope to learn more from and about the indigenous peoples of Southern Louisiana, who were here for many thousands of years before the arrival of European colonizers and enslaved Africans. May today be a chance to reflect on the colonization and the decolonization of this place, an opportunity to demonstrate respect for the peoples who have been here before and throughout these three most recent centuries. I wanna thank our team at the New Orleans Center for the Gulf South, Dr. Denise Frazier, Regina Cairns, Aaron Cohen, Natalie Clark, Zaria Jeffries, who have all worked tirelessly to help shape our day and to convert this room into a conference space. The New Orleans Center for the Gulf South is an interdisciplinary place-based institute within the School of Liberal Arts at Tulane University. And all of our programming is based on the belief that the more we understand where we are, the more fully we can engage in our democracy and our collective destiny. I also wanna offer thanks to our many conference sponsors, the Office of Academic Affairs and Provost, the School of Liberal Arts, the Department of Anthropology, the Department of French and Italian, the Center for Public Service, and the Murphy Institute. We have volunteers today, undergraduate and graduate students from several departments. Thank you each for being here today. We're grateful to Arielle Pintas and Court Batson of the School of Liberal Arts Dean's Office for creating our website. And I welcome you to visit the site for bios of presenters and an online agenda. And that address is up here, but it may be hard to see. It's indigenoussymposium.tulane.edu. I wanna thank my co-chair, Dr. Laura Kelly, who has been a phenomenal partner in the construction and planning of this day. As introduction to her, you'll, you'll see her throughout the day moderating, moderating and presenting. Laura Kelly is an immigrant and ethnic historian at Tulane University and the program director of Tulane's Summer in Dublin program. She is a recipient of numerous grants which have supported her research examining immigrant and ethnic communities in New Orleans, as well as indigenous communities in Southern Louisiana. Dr. Kelly has been researching the history of Native American tribes of Southern Louisiana, as well as working directly with them on a variety of projects for over a decade. Her 13-year collaboration with the Point of Shin Indian Tribe, a community partner of Tulane University, has resulted in numerous projects with topics ranging from coastal erosion to food waste. She is currently completing her second manuscript on the Irish, The Greening of New Orleans, as well as We the People, Native Americans, Europeans, Anglo-Americans, and the complex history of Southern Louisiana from colonial times to the present. Most of all, we're extremely grateful to be in partnership today with several tribes who even after centuries of precarious relationships with institutions that are Eurocentric and powered through white privilege, choose to engage as they see fit with scholars and scientists from our university. The Atakapa Ishak Nation, the Point of Shin Indian Tribe, the Ile de Jean Charles Band, the Tunica Biloxi Tribe of Louisiana, and the United Homa Nation. Throughout the approach and launch of the tricentennial, I've been curious about the presence of programming and reflection that relates to indigenous tribes who have lived here. Plans for today were seated over a year ago when Professor Richard Campanella reached out to me regarding the possibility of hosting a half-day symposium for a delegation from the French Academy of Sciences overseas who were coming to celebrate the tricentennial. Because many of the tribes are French speaking and because at the center we had received several excellent fellowship proposals from Tulane scholars conducting research related to these tribes, this delegation's visit seemed a perfect vehicle to address the tricentennial and expand to a day-long investigation comprised of indigenous leaders, scholars of varied disciplines, and artists to reflect on the presence and contributions of the French-speaking tribes over the past 300 years and to amplify current research and collaborations. Because the tri tribes are facing coastal migration due to subsiding land and ri rising seas, 
The talks you will hear today hold social, political, and environmental concerns as inseparable. Today also offers opportunity to discuss reciprocal processes between scholars and tribes that benefit tribes and our university. Tulane has long been a place that has mined information and artifacts from various tribes and communities. And as methods shift toward reciprocity, we need spaces to come together and discuss best practices and learn about new models. All too many of us here who aren't scholars in these areas and whose ancestors arrived after colonization, and I offer myself as an example of this, have so much to learn just to understand the basics of who and what was here before colonization and how their traditions and understandings relate to where we are today. May this be a reminder that today our gathering holds space for those with the deepest of knowledge and the beginners and that all are welcome. A few weeks ago, as we were still finalizing our program, and there were many scholars and projects to present, more scholars and projects to present than space in the day, Laura shared her observation that this could be an annual symposium. And I had that feeling in my gut, like daunting and exhilarating, that this was gonna be, I hope, part of our lives for a long time. So I wanna share with you that this morning we intend to repeat this, an this symposium annually with a different focus every year. We've learned from so many people about the interest in learning about the tribes in this area and the convening aligns deeply with our missions. One dynamic we hope will shift is that we aim to organize in deeper partnership with tribal members so that they are core organizers if they wish. Characteristics of the symposium that you'll experience today that we hope to repeat are bringing tribal members, humanity scholars, scientists, and artists together, welcoming international guests, and looking to the past and to the future to engage questions around what are old and new narratives about this region that can be resurrected or forged through research and creativity and that serve us today as we move into the next three centuries. So once more, welcome to the inaugural Indigenous Symposium hosted by the Center for the Gulf South. So we hope you will enjoy, we hope you will join us for many years to come. I'd like to invite up Monique Ferdan, a tribal council member of the United Homa Nation to bless this space today. Halito, uh, bonjour, good morning. Um, uh, I've been up since three this morning and I've been doing this installation in this beautiful oak tree um, that's back on the property we'll get to visit later. Um, so I got to watch the sunrise um, from this beautiful land that we're on under this 100-year-old oak tree um, and really been looking forward to this conversation. So just want to um, acknowledge uh, the, the great spirit that has built this land using the water and the sediment from, you know, all north of here, 41% um, of the United States draining down and building this beautiful land that has been home to the Homa and the Biloxi, the Atakapa Ishak, uh, the Washa, Shawasha, the Chapatulis, the Bayugula, um, the Sh Shiramacha, the Choctaw, uh, the Akolapisa, and all of those names of the people who we don't know anymore. So much has been lost, so much has been erased, and as we are um, trying to <laughs> decide how our coastal peoples continue to live in this very fragile, beautiful, magical place that we call home, um, that the ancestors and the spirits, my ancestors and your ancestors as well, have all brought us here to this place. And so may we use this day to recognize um, the lessons of the past so that we can um, move forward in healthy ways that are sustainable and are good for all people, indigenous um, and, and, and otherwise, and, and all life that is here, human and, and non-human. Thank you. Next to join us is President Denise Vialu, 
of the France Academy of Sciences overseas, whose visit sparked the idea for this gathering. I want to acknowledge President Vialu's son, Alex, who's a resident of New Orleans and friend, and who has been instrumental in translation of ideas and logistics. Thank you, Alex. Denise Fialo is Professor Emeritus at the National Museum of Natural History in France and a visiting professor at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. He is a member of the France Academy of Sciences Overseas and of numerous other committees and associations in France. Dr. Vialo is a specialist in Homo sapiens prehistory in Eurasia and the Americas. He is mostly interested in symbolic behaviors, particularly to painted and engraved sites, Paleolithic caves around the world. He also ran systemic digs and analyses in Brazil to compare modalities of peopling in, of South America to peopling of Western Europe. He has published over 300 articles in France and abroad, and he is also author of a dozen books published in France and Brazil. Please come join us. Thank you very much for your invitation. For us, it's an important moment in for our academy. Uh, and uh, it's an honor to be in this uh, Tulane University, because Tulane is the name of a French man in uh, New Orleans. <laughs> you know, it's strange, but it's something like this. Well, I am going to speak in French. It's easier for me, I beg your pardon. Je voudrais dire, comme Madame Snidecker vient de le mentionner, que appartenant au musée de l'homme, comme professeur au, au musée de l'homme, et appartenant à cette uh, Académie des sciences d'outre-mer, nous partageons avec vous, cher uh, Rebecca Snidecker et avec nos collègues d'ici, cette dimension anthropologique des hommes et de leur société. Et les, les États-Unis, à travers leur histoire, et la Louisiane, et la Louisiane en particulier grâce à la langue française qui a été et qui est partagée, ont eu un rôle très important dans la réflexion anthropologique, sur cette euh, capacité que tout homme a, s'il le souhaite, de rencontrer l'autre homme, d'être en compréhension avec l'autre. Et c'est aussi la devise de notre Académie des sciences d'outre-mer, de comprendre, de connaître, d'aimer l'autre. Et je crois que pour nous et toute notre délégation de l'Académie des sciences d'outre-mer ressent cela ici à travers tous les contacts que nous avons eus pendant cette semaine dans des petites villes de l'Acadie et puis maintenant aussi à Bâton Rouge et maintenant à la Nouvelle-Orléans dans cette université. Tous les échanges que nous avons eus et ceux que nous aurons aujourd'hui témoignent réellement de cette proximité que nous avons, de ces parentés fondamentales à travers l'histoire, même parfois à travers la génétique, mais que nous avons dans des perspectives pour notre monde. Et il est important pour nous de passer cette journée magnifique, sans doute, sur le plan culturel et intellectuel, et qui nous amène à dépasser nos propres limites nos propres frontières. Donc, je voulais vous adresser, madame et chers collègues, au nom de l'Académie que j'ai l'honneur de présider cette année, je voulais vous adresser toute notre reconnaissance pour cet accueil que vous nous faites dans cette superbe université. Donc, j'espère que nous allons passer une journée extrêmement riche, et je le pense, avec des exposés très intéressants et aussi beaucoup de discussions entre nous. Merci infiniment. Merci. 
we've had um, a year of correspondence, which has been a delight. So it's really incredible to have your delegation here for this for this exchange. I also want to uh, welcome Pierre Genie from the Academy. He's been the perpetual secretary of the France Academy of Sciences overseas since 2010. Trained as a scientist, Pierre Genie has a doctorate in geology with a specialization in hydrology and pedology. From 1963 to 83, he was in charge of the development of French colonies overseas, like Algeria, Benin, Togo, Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda, Lebanon, Thailand, and Ethiopia. He edited and contributed to several tec technical books. Later, he was sent on various missions by the Center for the Studies of the Mechanization of Agriculture, of Rural Engineering, and of Forest, and organized international relations in this context. He worked for the French National Geographic Institute for several international development projects in the Middle East in, as an advisor for the Minister of Agriculture for the realization of maps of agricultural land in France. Later, he became advisor for Africa and French-speaking communities in the Minister of Culture and French. Monsieur Genie is co-editor of three books, French Présence Overseas and From Colonial Indochine to Modern Vietnam and Environment and Rural and Development, a Guide to Resource Management. Please help me welcome Monsieur Genie. Mes chers amis, je, je préfère dire mes chers amis parce que nous sommes là ensemble, euh, universitaires, euh, scientifiques, euh, pour réfléchir et discuter sur une grande question, euh, deux grandes questions euh, même. Euh, la première, euh, si vous regardez le programme qui vous a été remis, vous verrez qu'il s'agit de regarder le milieu naturel. Euh, le milieu naturel est une chose importante ici. Euh, vous le savez, la, vous connaissez la fragilité euh, des, des lieux euh, compte tenu euh, des, des événements qui ont été vécus ici avec Katrina, mais également euh, des surprises que réserve le Mississippi euh, aux terres euh, qu'elle qu arrose. Donc je pense qu'il y a tout un aspect qui, qui sera abordé au début. Et ceci n'est pas séparé n'est pas séparé de la présence euh, des, euh, des populations d'origine. Je crois que euh, les populations qui se sont succédées ont appris à connaître ce milieu et donc nous apportent une connaissance. Et, et je crois que ce n'est pas simplement une question ethnologique, bien qu'elle soit très importante, Monsieur le Président, mais c'est aussi un aspect de, de connaissance pratique et je crois qu'il y aura beaucoup à apprendre de ce qui sera dit de ceux qui vivent depuis des millénaires auprès de ce fleuve immense et capricieux. Et puis, euh, je voulais aussi dire deux, trois mots sur l'Académie elle-même. Notre Académie a un caractère assez exceptionnel car elle n'est pas... Euh, C'est une société savante d'abord et elle n'est pas euh, uniquement dédiée à une seule sorte de connaissance. En cinq sections, nous recouvrons tous les domaines de la connaissance, depuis les sciences humaines jusqu'aux sciences pures, mais en passant également par le culturel, l'archéologie, la littérature. Il y a là euh, une somme de connaissances exceptionnelles que représentent un petit peu, modestement, les 50 personnes qui sont ici de l'Académie, mais qui sont de tous les domaines de la connaissance. Vous avez des professeurs d'université, vous avez des médecins, vous avez des diplomates, vous avez des militaires, des administrateurs et même des géologues, vous voyez. Donc vous avez absolument tous les domaines de la connaissance qui sont ici réunis et qui peuvent permettre d'avancer dans une réflexion commune que nous allons mener aujourd'hui. Donc avec évidemment d'abord l'évocation de ces questions du milieu naturel et ensuite tout, ce que, tout le dialogue avec les populations amérindiennes en particulier. Voilà, je pense que c'est un beau 
euh, schéma de réflexion commune. Merci.